Sonic, the heart of your system. Hi and welcome back to a new video. As you probably remember, last year, I think about nine months ago, we got a bundle from Aorus or Gigabyte, which was running at 5000 megahertz on the memory using, using AMD Ryzen CPUs. And now we got another five gigahertz memory bundle, but this time using an Intel CPU. It's a C490 platform, therefore the C490 Aorus Extreme motherboard. And you should be familiar with this motherboard already from my channel, because we already took a closer look at the Aorus Extreme Waterforce mainboard a few weeks ago, and it's basically the same board. They are hardware wise pretty much identical only the cooling is different because this one is not meant for water cooling therefore we have this fin stack on here on the VRMs and the fin stack itself also looks interesting. There is some kind of special coating on those fins. I will try to grab the camera in a second and give you some close-up shots so you can also get an idea of what I'm talking about. Looks quite interesting. Maybe we'll quickly disassemble uh, the VRM cooler as well, just to take a look at it from all the sides. See what Gigabyte put on the Aros Extreme in case you're deciding not to go for the Water Force version, because Water Force version is indeed quite pricey and I think this board should be more than enough. Otherwise, hardware wise, pretty much the same, 16 phases. Uh, I don't think there's any difference between the normal Extreme and the Extreme Water Force. Anyway, on this 5 GHz memory bundle we have a 10900K which was pre-binned on this board in combination with this memory kit and it's also a 5000 MHz memory kit. The problem is always with such configurations that I cannot guarantee that you can reproduce this exactly at home. It's already the case when you just look at the board then you will see that 2933 MHz is something you can always expect to be running because that's also what Intel guarantees on the CPU. But everything above is kind of gambling. It could be that the CPU drops out, I don't know, at 4266, 4600. As far as I can tell, all the CPUs I tested so far could run 4266 MHz. But above, like 4600, 4800, it's possible that there are some CPUs which are not capable of running such memory speeds. So always keep in mind if you want to go really for the highest and the best of the best, that there is a possibility that even if you buy a 10900K, if you buy the Aros Extreme and you get a certified 5 GHz memory kit, it's also possible that it's not going to run, simply because your CPU IMC might not be capable of reaching those speeds. Talking about that, we can quickly take a look into the QVL list of the Aorus Extreme, and especially at speeds of 4600 and above, there is not much which is certified for this board. If I remember correctly, only three or two kits are certified for five gigahertz on this board, and that's not really much. Also, typically, if you get those kits, like, 4600, 4800 or 5 gigahertz, the timings are quite loose. And talking about like C19, already those kits for example, 4266 are already C19, which is not the best latency for sure. Personally, I usually test with 3600 C14 because I think it's a very good combination of fairly high speed while keeping the latency low and usually those kits are not that pricey. You can also get like a 3600 kit like C15, C16 and then add a little bit more voltage and lower the latency. That usually works as well, depending obviously what kind of ICs you have on there. But usually getting those kits like 4600 or 5 gigahertz is sometimes not worth the price because they're really expensive and it's not guaranteed that it will work. But we will take a closer look at C490 today with the 10900K in combination with this 5 gigahertz uh, kit right here. And what's kind of interesting about this kit that is that it's running 5 gigahertz CL18 and that should be quite fast. I guess it should lead all the charts from my testing. I only have this kit for 48 hours which means I don't have that much time. I won't be able to do like 10 gaming benchmarks, but I will try my best to provide as much information to you as I can. First of all, let's take a quick look at the heatsink so we can get an idea what I was talking about with the coating. I hope you can see what I was talking about, talking about the heatsink itself. What looks like mud black is also very rough. Therefore, it has to be some kind of nano coating, like, I don't know, ceramic carbon, and that's something I've seen before in the automotive sector. And those technologies are usually used like on a nanometer scale to improve or increase the surface area of the product and therefore should improve 
the cooling capability of this board. I'm not sure how big the impact of this will really be, but it looks nice and feels really high quality. This is one of the memory modules I was talking about. Always interesting to see when we have a serial number one. That also always raises the question if this is a one out of one product. The other stick has a serial number two. And therefore I always ask myself, is this just a halo thing? Is this something like a prototype only we get to test and see once or will this eventually make it to the market anyway? 5 GHz C18 is definitely something that could be interesting. I didn't see such a kit before or tested it, therefore I think it will just be interesting to see if there is a performance gain in theory if we would use such a kit. Set up so far, up and running, some nice RGB on the card. You can see I'm using an EK Supremacy Evo water block, the two memory dims, 360 radiator, nothing spectacular for the moment. System just went into BIOS. You can see stock memory frequency obviously 2400 which means we will have to load XMP and then we will see if this works or if there are any issues we will have to face and fix first. XMP enabled 5 GHz but C19 that's interesting. The sticks read C18? Not sure, we will see. Also interesting, 1.6 volt from what I can see. Okay, I just did my first boot for the German video so far. Just the post itself is no problem, but then we get to boot into Windows. You can see it boots fine into OS, then gets stuck and I get a BSOD. All right, in this case, it was my mistake because first I thought, hmm, not booting BSOD, but then I figured out that it is my OS. For some reason, I had AMD Ryzen Master installed and um, for whatever reason it doesn't like to boot on the system right now therefore I just have to reset up my OS and that's a typical mistake or error that just happens and then you're blaming maybe the memory kit but then I just swapped the memory sticks to a different kit and still had the same mistake or the same error therefore going to reset up my OS and then see if everything works out. All right six hours later it took a lot more time than I expected to get this thing to run. It was not easy to get it to run and the first thing I had to do was also swap the sticks because in the first configuration it wouldn't boot and then after swapping the sticks also made sure that there is a fan pointed towards the sticks that they have proper temperature and then uh, loading XMP, tuning the voltages a little bit especially on uh, VCCSA. It needed quite a little bit of VCCSA about 1.4 volt to uh, make it uh, able to boot the 5 gigahertz but now everything um, is, is working fine however I'm not running 5 gigahertz C18 because the sticks were labeled with C18 and that's what I expected but then loading XMP it already read C19 in the BIOS not sure if just the label on the sticks is wrong but anyway right now running uh, 5 gigahertz C19 let's check it out in CPU-Z you can see the 5 GHz running CL192626 TRFC is quite a little bit high. I also tried to tighten the timings manually but just going to CL18 or tighten any of the other timings wouldn't work, wouldn't boot anymore. I cannot spend that much time on it because I also want to do some gaming benchmarks later. And yeah, you can see it's running dual channel. Let's just rerun the ADA64 benchmarks. You can see it's actually running stable. Read-write copy data is pretty much expected, nothing that spectacular, especially if you keep numbers in mind from AMD Threadripper platform or even Socket 2066 with quad channel, then you would see higher numbers with like uh, 70, 80, 90 gigabyte per second. Here read 56 gigabyte per second, write 69 gigabyte per second and copy 53 gigabyte per second. What's interesting and good is the latency number with 47 seconds. That's a quite good value, especially if you would compare it with a normal AMD Ryzen CPU, let's say a 3900X and would run like 3600 C15, something in that direction. You would have numbers in the region of 60 nanoseconds, therefore 47 nanoseconds, that's a quite good value. In the last comparison video when we did exactly the same with uh, Ryzen 3900X or 3950X, I cannot really remember, we were mostly looking at production benchmarks, Adobe Premiere, 7-Zip, stuff like that, and people were complaining why I did not show gaming benchmarks. This time, unfortunately, I only have one day working on this, therefore we will do gaming benchmarks. I will try to do two or three games, depending how much time I have, hey Sheik. 
and um, then I will be back with hopefully a lot of data we can talk about. See you in a second. All right, I'm back. For you, it was just a few minutes. For me, it was pretty much 24 hours. It's quite late in the evening right now and tomorrow morning I have to ship everything back. But I'm quite okay with the testing. I managed to finish benchmarks in Battlefield 5 and Shadow of the Tomb Raider. It's not too bad. We can at least get some insights what you could expect from theoretically running 5 GHz on the memory. But running 5 GHz on memory was a challenge. It was really strange. At a certain point, I was getting like BSODs and then I thought, what's going on previously it was working out fine and then suddenly i was getting instability and i was not sure if it was the main board memory sticks or the cpu did a lot of testing swapped out cpus and everything and in the end i found out that it's the temperature which is causing the issues if i'm ramping up my fan speed to 100 percent and keep the room temperature a little bit lower then it's safe but it's really hard on the edge, which means I also wanted to overclock the CPU to 5 gigahertz, 5.1 gigahertz, 5.2 gigahertz. And for that, I obviously have to increase vCore. And at the same time, if you increase vCore, you're always immediately increasing core temperature and that caused instability. And then I thought, okay, maybe I just improved the cooling. Otherwise I figured out that I can just do undervolting. I dropped the V-Core by about 30 to 40 millivolt and that significantly helped to improve the stability. But I was not able to perform any overclocks on the CPU running 5 gigahertz on the memory. Whenever I had it at 5 gigahertz on the memory, doing anything to the CPU which caused high temperatures would make it crash. Which also means I couldn't run like Prime 95 because that would be too much temperature. Cinebench would work once in a while but not that often. Gaming was fine because gaming temperatures are so much lower but overclocking benchmarks was not possible. If I decreased the memory speed to like 4.8 gigahertz everything was running fine I could even overclock the CPU but it shows what you can probably expect from C490 and the CPUs and this is a highly bin CPU which means that's probably I don't know how many they tested to find one that can do 5 gigahertz on like water cooling but if you get a random 10900K, I don't think you can run 5 gigahertz. I also tried three more retails, which I had here for testing. None of them could boot 5 gigahertz. One could boot 4.8, two could boot 4.6. Not sure if they're very good ones or very bad ones. Three CPUs is not much, so you can draw any conclusions, but I don't think that you can run 5 gigahertz on every CPU. But let's take a quick look at the benchmarks which I was able to perform Battlefield 5 and Shadow of the Tomb Raider. First of all, Battlefield 5 in 1440p running with an RTX 2080 Ti. All the results you can see here were done with stock CPUs. Nothing was overclocked. Unfortunately, I didn't have enough time to perform overclocked benchmarks with the hardware I got. So you can see some Ryzen CPUs for comparison and everything that is marked blue is the i9-10900K in the center with 2666C16, which is slower than a 9900 KS pretty much on the level on an R9 3900X at 3600C14. Looking at the chart above, it's getting quite interesting. It doesn't matter if you're running 3600C16, 4266C19 or 5GHz C19. The minimum FPS stayed the same with 135. Only the average slightly increased by one FPS from 3600C16 to 4266 and from 4266 to 5GHz it improved by 4 FPS on average but minimum FPS stayed the same and I think you can kind of also draw the conclusion here that I'm running into the GPU limit which is kind of obvious at this resolution and also if you consider the speed of the 9900KS which is running 8 core at 5 gigahertz, almost no difference to 10900K. That's why I think we're more running in the GPU limit in this case. Quite similar results with Shadow of the Tomb Raider 1440p again with RTX 2080 Ti. However, in this game, I saw that the R9 3900X with 3600C14 was ahead of the 10900K with 2666C16, which is a fairly slow memory speed. Looking at the results above, it's pretty much the same as what we've seen in Battlefield 5. Minimum FPS, the same for all three cases, 95 FPS, and then a slight increase in average FPS by one or two FPS, but not really a big difference. 
Time to get to the conclusion and to talk about what we just learned. Personally, I find it quite impressive that those boards can work with 5 GHz on the memory. That's really impressive. I also have no doubts that it's possible to bin memory sticks that can run 5 GHz, but then on the other hand, how difficult will it be to find a CPU that can run 5 GHz on the memory and especially in every condition? And Typically you would also like to overclock the CPU at the same time because if you have this kind of a memory configuration and running the CPU stock wouldn't make much sense. Therefore, personally, I would go for lower memory speeds and not be limited by the temperature of the IMC. Maybe go for 4133, C14, C15, something in this direction. I think that makes much more sense to use a slower memory speed and a tighter timings and not be that much in trouble when it comes to the temperature of the IMC or the CPU itself because I'm not sure do you really want to buy 5 or 6 10900K and then bin to see if you can run 5 gigahertz on the memory for this kind of tiny performance gap you can get from like 3600C16 to 5 gigahertz C19 at least from the quick testing I could perform there's not a huge advantage and therefore running 4 gigahertz C14 maybe with very tight custom timings will give you better results and less hassle. That's my personal opinion on this. It's interesting to see that the boards are this solid that they can run theoretically 5G. That's very good because then you can get a CPU. You can test the CPU for IMC capability and then select your memory accordingly. I think that makes much more sense. Anyway, it was cool to learn that the CPUs really depend that much on temperature. Thanks for tuning in and see you next time. Bye. Excuse me, Sheik. I think I will need the cooling. <laughs>